Great. Um, so let me introduce myself first. Um, I am Rishab, um, and I'll be talking about session hijacking and how do you um, deal with that using rotating refresh tokens. So this comes under number two in the OWASP top 10 list uh, under the bro uh, broken authentication. Um, it's essentially, the format of my talk would be that uh, first I'll talk about uh, why session security matters, uh, then you know the different ways of hijacking a session, um, what the current state of the art is, and then introducing rotating refresh tokens and talking about how that works. Um, before I dive in, uh, let me you know clarify some of the terminology that I'll be using. So essentially, a session is what is used to communicate between a front-end client, so that's your browser or uh, mobile app um, with your application layer, right? Via APIs. Um, so there's no third party involved, it's just your front end and your back end. Um, the session starts when the user logs in and ends when the user logs out. Um, session management, on the other hand, is to do with how the session behaves. So um, what the timeout of the session is, um, what are the different types of tokens that one can use? So either JWTs or random strings, um, also known as opaque tokens. Um, how often do these change, if at all? Um, where are they stored, um, and how they're revoked? Um, so, you know, like, why is session why is session security even important, right? We have um, really good um, technology in terms of login security, web both end and hardware keys and and password lists, and these essentially mitigate, you know, phishing, which is essentially the largest way to access users like the most common way of accessing users accounts so why do we need why do we need sessions right and um unfortunately these are not enough and um and the reason for that is most api calls interact with sessions um right after the login um essentially the ways that apis identify you is through your session id or session cookie um the login stuff happens initially while the user is getting authenticated so there you can have password lists or hardware keys but after that's done it, it all depends on how the session uh, how session management um, works within your app um, essentially you know if these session tokens are stolen somehow and we'll we'll see how um, regardless of what you do on the login side um, an attacker can use these to access your account right and um, you know as a recent example of this uh, we saw this happen to recent YouTube influencers where um, their session cookies were stolen due to a malware. Um, and, and essentially what happened was they were socially engineered into downloading a malware and that malware took the um, YouTube sessions from Chrome um, and sent that off to the attacker. Um, and the attacker could use those session cookies to essentially access the influencers accounts completely bypassing 2FA or any other login security they must have had for the YouTube account. Um, and this is essentially why we care about session security and why it's important. Um, and malware is not the only way that sessions can be stolen. There are a bunch of other methods, as you can see. And um, some of these are um, more solvable than others. So the ones in green can be solved uh, through careful technical uh, implementation, uh, whereas the ones in red are completely, you know, the only way to solve them is to detect session hijacking. So let me give you an example. So um, rogue browser extensions. Um, so browser extensions can read HTTP only cookies for any website uh, for the uh, within the browser. Um, and if if one of the users of your application has a rogue extension installed, uh, there's nothing that your application can do to prevent that uh, uh, that extension to read the cookies and send them off to the attacker. Right? The only you cannot prevent that. The only thing you can do is detect session hijacking when that occurs. And that's why it's important to detect session hijacking. That being said, many of the open source libraries that exist, so you have libraries for <clears throat> Laravel or Django, um, these don't really uh, you know, even implement the stuff in green. Uh, you have to be really careful when implementing sessions to cover as much risk as possible. Um, so let's talk about the current ways in which you know, people take care of session hijacking or detect session hijacking. There are essentially two methods. Um, one is IP address matching, um, so every um, so essentially when you create a session um, the IP address of that request is saved against the session information and every subsequent session verification matches the IP address um, and make sure they're the same if they aren't then the session is revoked um, so while this may stop session hijacking 
um, this causes a bad user experience because you know if a user is traveling within the city or uh, uses a VPN, then they essentially get logged out. The other method is device fingerprinting. So uh, for every API call that uh, the browser makes, uh, the JavaScript calculates the device fingerprint and attach, attaches it to the header. Um, the backend then checks whether the fingerprint has changed over time, and if it has, uh, it means that uh, the session is being used in multiple devices, uh, which means session hijacking, and then the session can be revoked. Um, this, however, has the problem of being easily spoofable because it's just a header uh, in the API call. The attacker can add their own, um, you know, find out the device fingerprint of the victim and add that to the header, and it's spoofed. Um, so one has the problem of um, false positives and one has the problem of false negatives. Um, so what can we do? Um, in order to do something better, we essentially have rotating refresh tokens. And uh, this is something that's you know, uh, being recommended by one of the recent RFCs as well, uh, where they said that for browser-based applications, you must use rotating refresh tokens or one-time use refresh tokens. Um, this, is, this, is the, this is from the OAuth spec. Um, again, session is a, sessions can be different than you know, sessions and OAuth are two different things, but we can kind of borrow the idea of rotating refresh tokens uh, from here and apply it to sessions as well. Um, so before I get into um, how rotating refresh tokens work, uh, let me start with something simple. The, the simplest form of session management, uh, which is one long-lived access token or one long-lived session ID token. Um, and this is again implemented in most of the uh, open source libraries that you would use for your applications. So the user authenticates themselves first, um, and the uh, you know the API returns an access token. This access token can be a JWT or an opaque token, and this is also known as session ID or session cookies, um, but we call it access tokens. Uh, every subsequent request uses the access token um, to get back data from the API. Um, at some point. Um, the access token is going to expire. Um, at that point in time, um, your APIs will start failing and the user will get logged out. Um, then the user must re-authenticate themselves in order to continue using the application. Now, this is a pretty simple flow. However, um, from a security point of view, if this access token is compromised, then the attacker has uh, access to the victim's account for as long as the session is alive, which can be a pretty long, long, long amount of time depending on your application. Um, so, you know, what, what, we can, what can we do to uh, reduce the risk? Um, we essentially introduce a new token. Uh, let's call this a refresh token. Um, as usual, uh, the uh, user authenticates themselves and, um, you know, but now instead of just an access token, the API returns an access and a refresh token. Um, they, uh, you know, the browser uses the access token uh, for API calls. Um, and at some point in time, the access token is going to expire. Um, but instead of logging out the user, uh, what we do is we use the refresh token to get a new access token, and the session can continue. Um, at some point, both of both the tokens will expire, the access token as well as the refresh token. Um, then the access tokens calls will fail, and the refresh tokens as well, um, and then the user must re-authenticate. So um, if we do a security analysis of this, um, if the attacker only managed to steal the access token, uh, then they have only a limited amount of time in which they can exploit that. So that's that's one good uh, point in com compared to the compared to flow number one. Um, however, if they get a hold of the refresh token, um, that's essentially the same problem as flow one. Uh, because the refresh token is long lived, um, essentially um, the attacker can uh, you know get access to the user's account for a long period of time. Um, so this this brings us to rotating refresh tokens, right? Um, so as usual, the user authenticates themselves. Um, then the API returns an access and a refresh token. Um, the access token is used for API calls. Um, at some point, the access token expires, um, and you know the the browser uses the refresh token to get back a new access token and a new refresh token. And this is what's different than flow number two. Uh, in flow number two, you only got back a new access token, but here you also get back a new refresh token. Um, then um, you know the session continues by using the refresh token, uh, sorry, the access token. Um, and at some point, they both are going to expire as well. Um, you know, the access token will not be usable, the refresh token will not be usable, and the user has to re-authenticate. Re now, the the biggest difference between this flow and flow number two is is this uh, in in the red box. 
um, when we use a refresh token, we get back a new access token and a new refresh token. Um, and this allows us to detect session hijacking as um, I'll be explaining right now. So we have three parties here, the user, the attacker, and the uh, API layer. Um, so the user has uh, a refresh token and an access token. So R0 and A0. Um, the user can use the access token to call the APIs. Um, let's say that you know the attacker somehow manages to get R0 and A0. Um, and they can call the API again uh, with A0. And, and you know, session hijacking is, uh, is successful at the moment. But because A0 is short-lived, um, it will eventually expire, hopefully pretty soon. Um, at that point in time, uh, you know, the user will use R0 to get back um, R1 and A1, and R0 will also be revoked by the API. Um, now, because A0 has been revoked and the attacker has only R0 and A0, um, the attacker is going to be using R0. Um, at this point in time, the API can detect the fact that you know a revoked token is being used and therefore session hijacking must be happening and can revoke the session entirely and a very similar logic holds for when uh for for if the attacker uses r0 first um and essentially this is uh, how rotating refresh tokens help in detecting session hijacking um however there's one problem with this which is in step number two um when the attacker has a0 uh, and it's not expired, they can use that to um, carry our session hijacking. In order to prevent that, we, we essentially couple this with a traditional method of IP address matching. What we can do is um, when the attacker uses A0 in step number two, um, the backend API can detect that the IP address has changed if the attacker is in a different location than the user, which is often the case. And instead of waiting for A0 to expire naturally, I would immediately revoke A0. And that would basically, uh, so instead of waiting for minutes or hours for A0 to expire, it would expire immediately. And this would then result in the user using R0, um, which will then you know, trigger the session theft flow and the session would get revoked. Um, so in, in terms of like the technical flow, it, 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 it makes sense, right? But the challenges come in implementation. Um, so, Let's talk about one challenge first. So a parallel request to refresh API. If we consider this diagram, um, if for reason, if for some reason, the user uses R0 multiple times at the same time, um, then one of the requests is going to revoke um, R0. And if the other request reaches the server after that, it's going to raise a false alarm of token theft, right? Now, the reason why the user would call multiple requests to the refresh API is, uh, for example, on the start of an application. Um, when a user visits an application after the access token is expired, that typically means multiple parallel requests to API to load you know, the user information, which then might lead to uh, multiple calls to the refresh API. And that can lead to false negatives, uh, false positives, as we're seeing here. Another challenge is network failure issues. So, um, if you consider again step three here uh, where the user has a refresh like r0 and they use that um the api is going to revoke r0 and return r1 and a1 now ideally these tokens should reach the client but if for some reason they don't due to poor network um the client would be forced to use r0 once again and that would essentially lead to a false positive um in in, in trying to solve for these issues um, one eventually realizes that um, for every every uh, R zero that the client has, uh, you essentially have to maintain uh, uh, like more refresh tokens that are tied to that R zero. So, for example, if R zero is used like three times in parallel, um, for each of those API requests, you want to return a, a new set of tokens, right? So, um, for example, you have R zero and A zero, um, and let's say R zero is used multiple times in parallel we do not revoke r0 at any point in time uh, we don't revoke r0 essentially and for each api request we return you know a new set of tokens um, and and so we have to maintain sort of this parent and child hierarchy where the parent has r0 and it's got you know children tokens associated with it um, at some point uh, the front end client will use one of these access or refresh tokens so we don't know which one it could use a1 or a2 or a3 so on uh, but it will use one of them let's say 
it uses uh, A3. At that point in time, you know that uh, the client has R3 and A3, and then you can revoke R1, R2, R0, and you know all the sibling tokens. Um, and a similar similar thing holds for you know when R3 is used, uh, it will also have you know its own refresh tokens, children, and 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 you know when one of them is used, you revoke everything else. Um, so this essentially is sort of like a refresh token family tree is what I like to call it. Um, and to maintain a data structure like this in um, in a scaled and distributed environment can be challenging. Um, however, it's possible. And um, you know this, the, the way to do that is sort of out of the scope of this presentation. I'm happy to discuss that in any of the sessions tomorrow if anyone is interested. Um, but to tie to tie things up, um, you know the business benefits of using rotating refresh tokens for your sessions is that um, you know this increase in app security and user security. You essentially prevent identity theft. And I believe that session related attacks are only going to grow in popularity as login uh, technology improves. Um, the second is that uh, because you know the tokens are changing all the time, you can keep users logged in for longer, more securely. This means you have better user experience. Um, and uh, there's also like compliance requirements. So uh, compliance has always been like sort of backwards compared to the OAuth RFCs. Uh, but I believe that they will eventually catch up, and when that happens, uh, then you know rotating refresh tokens might become a compliance uh, requirement. Uh, but if you implement this today, then you're anyways you know, you're already checking all the compliance boxes when it comes to session management. Uh, and finally, it's about like improving API performance. So because these tokens change, um, we can essentially uh, uh, take the risk of using JWTs for the access token. Now JWTs have a downside to them. Um, and we can mitigate those downsides by using rotating refresh tokens. Again, I'm happy to go into detail of how, um, but essentially in using JWTs, you can uh, improve the speed at which session verifications happen and therefore improving API performance. Um, yeah, finally, it's um, here's some more reading material. I believe the slides will be distributed to everybody. And if anyone's interested, you know, they can read up more on this topic through these links. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? We have plenty of time. So if there are no other questions, I have a question. Um, so are you actually using this uh, in, in scale currently? In some implementation? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't hear you. So, uh, are we are you using this to scale somewhere? Um, so, you mean uh, am I using this uh, rotating fresh tokens in a scaled way, in a scaled manner in some application? Is that what your question is? So, in a large ecosystem, um, not yet. Um, but essentially the um, the performance, uh, so in terms of space and time complexity, right? So there is, uh, in space complexity, we have tied it down to just being able to store one refresh token and one access token per session. Uh, even though there are multiple uh, children tokens, as I was talking about, uh, if you just store the parent refresh token in the database and create the children tokens, such that they reference the parent tokens, um, through hashing, then uh, then you don't need to store any of the children in the in the database. So in terms of space complexity, it works out just the same as if you're not using rotating refresh tokens. In terms of time complexity, um, uh, you you essentially have to um, so your most of your API calls will require only the access token, which can be a JWT. 
and those do not require uh, any sort of network calls to uh, verify. So, so um, verifying those is super quick, like sub millisecond latency. Um, when you have to call the refresh token, you're essentially um, doing a transaction on the database um, to to um, promote the child refresh token that was used to become the parent. Um, and in that sense, the cost there compared to other you know simpler methods of session management is just this one transaction that you have to do uh, when calling refresh APIs. So I believe that you know should not add too much too many issues to the latency uh, because these transactions happen only when refresh is called, which is again a rare case because it might be happening once every hour or once every day depending on the access to that time. So I believe that it can be scaled pretty easily. Yeah. 